Tomorrow night we'll be kicking off a 26-hour television extravaganza, all in the name of children's health. But this telethon is special. It's our 50th. Mark Gibson looks back at the unforgettable moments and the magic milestones. And what a wonderful opening to Telethon. For 49 years we've laughed, cried, danced and sung. The children are our future. Raising along the way $231 million for children's health. The great thing too is the Telethon Institute gets bigger and better every year and it's renowned the world over for its research. So, in almost half a century, what are Telethon's top ten moments? The premiers. The premiers. The premiers. The premiers. The premiers. <laughs> Our seven Perth stars say we need to start way back where it all began. Perhaps the premiers in the nutty too. <laughs> the first Telethon was 1968, nine years after television began at TVW7. When we were, of course, very small children. That's exactly right. It was black and white, but it's amazing how much money everybody's raised since. The start of the tradition, really, wasn't it? Proof that men have been ripping off their shirts since the very first telephone. This, this is embarrassing. Mum's just rung up and she's given me $100 <laughs> to put mine back on. <laughs> and I remember sitting up late with my dad watching some of the more R-rated stuff that happened after midnight. At number nine, the mystery pie thrower, the phantom flan flinger. And, oh, oh. Who continually emerges from the shadows. No one was ever quite sure who it was. I, I have a feeling I know who it was, but he, of course, will remain nameless. What I do know is that Rick Arden was the target more times than most others. <laughs> it was always the Jaws music you heard, that boom, boom, and you knew you were going to cop it. I figured out after a while that I wouldn't wear my best suits because you get cream on them. <laughs> I knew it. It happens every year. He copped more pies in the face than anyone. Number eight in Telethon's top ten... Stuart Wagstaff. The late Stuart Wagstaff, who was there from the very start. Stuart Wagstaff was such a wonderful friend to Telethon. He'd come across year after year. He was such a great entertainer. An English-born Sydney cider who came to Perth for more than 30 Telethons. On the good ship, lollipop. He was such a classy man too, he so was. the fact that he actually gave himself over to those sort of skits was incredible. Great friend of Jeff Newman and a huge supporter of Telethon right through to his older age. He got involved, he was happy to do anything and we laughed at him, he laughed with us, we laughed together. He was a great trooper for Telethon. Our number seven Telethon moment, the conga lines and that familiar song. So it was a lot of fun in the studio. Everyone would come down. It was organised mayhem. It was a bit controversial, to be honest, when the conga line fell by the wayside. And maybe, just maybe, for the 50th, it will be back. This is Telethon 2004. At number six, our first telethon at the new convention centre in 2004. It's awesome. You're all part of history. After 36 years, we'd outgrown Channel 7's Dianella Studios. So we went from the huge stars in the small place to the much bigger place, but the great thing was so many more people could come and share it with us. I think in many ways it was the growing up of Telethon and it was bringing Telethon into the new television era. It was very exciting to be a part of. At number five, the Telethon home. The first Telethon home sold for $17,500. How's that? All done! All silent, the property's going to be sold. The style of houses has changed over the years, but the auction time has stayed the same. 11 o'clock Sunday morning, you can set your watch by it on Telethon weekend. In total, the homes have raised $23 million. They're always done to an amazingly high degree of quality and they're always great value. They're a great buy. Number four in our Telethon countdown, the superstars. As the sun it was a very special place to be, that Telethon studio. Some of the biggest names in the world came through. From the biggest names in Aussie music to international megastars, we've witnessed some awesome entertainment. Let's give a little love to Dane. Let's give to Telethon. We had Stevie Wonder. How amazing was he? And at one point he went missing. Nobody could find him. He was in a room surrounded by kids and they were all singing with him. He was just the most amazing giving guy. Thank you very much. The quirkiness of some of the stars. For example, Whitney Houston, the air conditioning had to be off. So everybody was perspiring down the corridors of the old Channel 7. Oh, oh!
the other one who I really remember as being incredibly generous, generous was Julian Lennon, who at the end of his appearance donated $100,000. Number three in our top ten moments, the madcap multi-million dollar challenges. There are balls flying everywhere here. Well, those amazing skits that you do, Mark, all I can say is I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> People always think that last challenge must be rigged. It's not. We are spontaneously hoping that it will go off so that we can reach and raise that big amount. All up, Crown Perth has donated just over $13 million. Then the reaction when the money comes through, especially those million dollar moments, are fantastic. At number two, last year's telethon, a record total of $26.29 million. That's why we love Western Australia and we love West Australians because everybody comes together to help raise money for kids and just giving is such a, a wonderful thing, it really is. We always say if we can raise one more dollar than the year before, we'll be happy. And that's the aim again this year. We'll be back here tomorrow night to do it all again. Our 50th telethon live from the Convention Centre. But that leaves one thing. What's number one in our all-time top ten telethon moments? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Perth for Telethon 1985, Michael Jackson. In 1985, a massive coup. The biggest pop star on the planet visited PMH and appeared on Telethon. He wanted to buy Northern Songs, which was the Beatles songbook, and Robert Holmes Accord, our owner at the time, owned Northern Songs, and he sold it to him on condition that he came to Perth for Telethon. The city stopped. The world's biggest entertainer on our Telethon. It was just remarkable. It was wonderful. It was a wonderful experience to see all the children. I loved it. He didn't sing. He said just a few words and then left. But being close to this superstar again was a remarkable experience. Thank you very much for your kind donation. Thank you very much.